Hello and welcome to The Paul Garcia Show, where I have meaningful conversations with remarkable people about their lives, experiences, and insights. Today I have a very special episode format for you. I will be speaking with two people with opposing views on masking. I'll first be speaking with Scott Willey, who is pro-mask, for about 25 minutes, and then immediately after that I will be speaking with Tricia Rodriguez, who is anti-mask. I think this episode turned out pretty well, and if you think so too, let me know by liking and sharing this video on Facebook and subscribing on YouTube. Also, if you'd like to contribute to this show's production, I invite you to become a patron on patreon.com forward slash Paul Garcia. We'll get early access to each and every episode, just like this one right here. And I also ask that while I do encourage free speech in the comments, consider limiting any name calling, just because I'd like to have more episodes like this one in the future, and I don't want potential guests to think that this is something like a death sentence. So thank you for that. Before we begin, though, let me say thank you to one of our two sponsors today. Valentine's Day is coming up, and you do not want to be the person who doesn't get your special someone a beautiful bouquet of flowers. The gift of flowers has long been a way of expressing your love and admiration for your significant other on this centuries-old holiday. But if you attempt to go out and find your own flowers, arrange them nicely, and get them to your person on time, you can go wrong in so many different ways. Lucky for you, Nature's Designs by Tiff in Fairbury is taking all the stress out of the holiday this year so that you can fully enjoy it with the person you you love. Just call them up at 815-692-3024 and tell them that you'd like some flowers to be delivered to your loved one's address on Valentine's Day. You can even ask that they deliver in the morning or in the afternoon, and they can even include chocolates, stuffed animals, candles, bath products, plants, and other cute gift items as well to really put a smile on your loved one's face. So don't delay. Call up Nature's Designs by Tiff at 815 692 3024 for and schedule your incredible Valentine's Day delivery package and make this Valentine's Day the best one yet. All right, and now let's get on to the show. Scott Willie, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. I appreciate your time very much. Well, thanks for having me, Paul. And I really enjoyed the last one. I really look forward to this one as well. Right on. So, Scott, before we begin things, could you just tell the listeners and the viewers a little bit about who you are and what it is you do? Okay. My, well, first, my name is Scott Willie. Um, I'm a health and PE teacher at Prairie Central High School. I've been there for about 21 years. And before that, I was a health PE teacher at Midwest Central, which is down by South Peak and area. I was a teacher down there for four years. I, I coached girls volleyball, um, boys golf, and assisted with track and field. And I, re I really love what I do. Um, I don't claim to be an epidemiologist or a professional in disease by any means. Um, I do my best to teach the kids how to stay safe and protect themselves. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to today's, uh, today's show and hear what the other side has to offer. As am I and as are a lot of people, I'm sure. So let's just jump right into things then. What are your thoughts on mask mandates at this time in public spaces and in public schools? Are they necessary? Does the good outweigh the bad? What do you think? It's, it's a good question. And this is one that should not be new to anyone. Um, mandates have been around for decades, maybe even centuries. Um, as, a, as a health teacher, we, we were taught to, to, to follow the CDC, the World Health Organization, the Surgeon General, because those are very educated people with doctoral degrees um, that are very knowledgeable in the subject area. But mandates are nothing new, Paul. We've seen this throughout American history. Um, it's because, um, and you go back to the Constitution, in the preamble, we hear about providing for the common defense and promoting the general welfare. So these mandates are part of that promoting the general welfare. This is why we have a CDC. This is why we have um, an Occupational Safety and Health Administration. This is why we have a Surgeon General. This is why back when polio was killing thousands and thousands of people in the United States. We have a mandatory vaccination, which took it out. Now, I'm not saying a vaccination is going to take out COVID, but that's what, that's what these mandates do over time. We had people dying going through windshields, and the government put mandates, and local governments, state governments were putting mandates on seatbelt wearing. 
and people were upset about that. That's our personal thing. You can't put restrictions on that. I remember in 1985 growing up when that was required in New York State. I'm a, I'm a former New Yorker. Um, so this stuff is nothing new. And we're going to have our opinions on them. But our governing bodies try to do their best to promote the general welfare. And sometimes I think they're, they're necessary. Sometimes I think myself, too, that they're not always the great thing. But mandates are nothing new. They're going to happen. And we're going to love them. We're not going to love some of them. Hmm. So you're saying that this is not anything new. This has happened before in history. There's been similar pushback to it, but ultimately it's been a good thing more often than not, or perhaps it's only been a good thing, at least in the short American history. Is is that right? It's been recurrent. It's been good. That's, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Has it always been perfect? No. As long as human beings are going to do stuff, we're going to screw things up. But for the most part, I think people go that run through these offices, they do it with the best intentions. Mm -hmm. And do you have to get certain vaccines in order to attend public school? I've kind of been out of that loop for a while, but I remember having to get certain shots when I was a kid. Is that still how it is? There are certain vaccines that are mandated um, for people to do. Um, You are required to do a tetanus shot before you come in. There's one example of one. Now, in terms of COVID, there are none for for people. That's their option to do that. Um, But yeah, there are some options. There there are some mandatory vaccines that people have to have before they come to the high school. And I'm talking the freshman students. Mm -hmm. So just put it clearly, are you for mandates for masks in schools? Yes or no? I think as a health teacher and that we, we still are in a global pandemic, we're not in, we're getting close to the endemic phase of this. But in a pandemic phase, um, I think masks are necessary. Um, it's part of that three part system to protect yourself and others. Um, a mask is one part of that. The other part of that is social distancing or if you're sick, you stay home. And the other part's just the basic hygiene part, washing your hands, using the hand sanitizer, um, washing your hands after you've come into contact with a drinking fountain, things like those. But um, masks have been shown, Paul, over the years, over a century to be helpful. Even as far back as 1905, a Dr. Alice Hamilton showed the importance of masks for surgeons. Before that, surgeons did not have masks. They were just, well, cutting their patients open. But she proved that hey, if you don't cover up, you're going to infect your patients and self-defeat what you're trying to do. Five years later in China, there's a pneumonic plague. And one of the doctors there, Wu Lian Te, I hope I got it right. But he even came up with the cotton, the cotton woven mask with a, um, with a cotton gauze tacked as another filter in there. And this carried over to the 1918 Spanish flu So the mask thing has been used for over a century and it's been proven to stop the disease Hmm. or stop diseases. I'm sorry. I'm no epidemiologist, but I do want to say that there are a lot of people that say that claim that the masks are actually ineffective and that the CDC will even recognize this. Is that true? Have you heard that? And what's your response to that? There, some of the ones I have heard too, Paul, was that COVID's way too small for a mass to catch. And I agree with that statement 100%. What people sometimes forget, though, is COVID needs a way to transport to a host. So that's what the moist droplets do. A moist droplet, when someone talks, sneezes, coughs, sings, whatever, It's in that moist droplet and a mask can catch that droplet, okay? So the analogy I have heard is where a mosquito can get through a chain link fence. Let's pretend the mosquito's COVID. The chain link fence is um, a mask, okay? The mosquito can get through that pretty easy. But pretend the moist droplet's like a tennis ball that the mosquito's in it's not getting through that fence now. Is that kind of an analogy that makes sense? I, I Absolutely. Is that is it accurate, though? Um, you would know better than I do. Is that how it works? The moist droplets, they're, they're way bigger than the, uh, than the actual COVID. But the masks can trap that. 
Um, hopefully if there's time, you can show a video that shows the masks and how they trap, whether it's a single layer cotton, a double layer cotton or a surgical mask. But, um, yeah, they can trap them. Are they perfect? No. In fact, if you watch it, you'll see how sometimes the two layer and the surgical mask doesn't stop them, but it certainly lessens the chance. So yeah, COVID can get through a mask, but it needs help. It needs a droplet to be in to get into the human, to get infections. And that's what can stop COVID is the mask because it stops the droplets that the COVID is in. So hopefully that, that makes sense with that. It, it does. That's very fascinating. And I haven't heard that before. And I'm sure a lot of the people that are listening and watching this haven't heard that before. So that's very interesting. What do you say, though, about if you spend all day at work, say, and then with a mask on, and then you go out to lunch with everyone, and you take your masks off when you're eating. Well, at that point, there's a free exchange of these droplets that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And that's still something that's pretty much allowed right now. And I don't even know about the six foot distancing rule, if that's ultra effective. But do you think that kind of defeats the purpose of masking all day when you go out to lunch with your colleagues, and you eat? close together with your mask down like could 24 23 hours of masking be made useless if you do one hour of maskless it's absolutely uh, something that could happen and if people choose to go to a restaurant with their friends and take the masks off and congregate and socialize and and get with each other yeah you do put that put in that risk so that's why a lot of people just choose not to go with their friends to the restaurants and have I gone with my friends to the restaurants um, during the during the pandemic time? Yes, I have. Um, I I miss my socializing just mm. as much as the next person. And yeah, there is a risk there. Um, I don't. I haven't been doing it as much lately. Um, but you, you certainly do bring in that risk. Hmm. And I apologize. I'm harping on this question a little more than I originally planned, but. What are your thoughts? Firstly, you just said you miss your social life. Do you think that the masks hinder the socialization of kids and really their psychology in some terrible way? Because I know that a lot of parents are worried about that. They say that the masks and some teachers are upset about it, that the masks um, make it difficult to socialize and to communicate in meaningful ways in the ways that they were you know, they've lived their whole lives doing. Do you think that it's actually detrimental to that, the masks? I think in many ways, the mask is de- is detrimental. Um, there's a physiological reason for it. And there's going to be some hardship that comes with that. And I think we've all experienced that. Um, there's kids that, adults too, we go through that pandemic fatigue. Um, we all, we've done, I think a lot of us did a really good job at the beginning of the pandemic trying to comply to what the CDC and the governments have been saying. And we want it to be over. And the kids have been that way too. And I don't blame them. I get tired of telling the kids to put the mask up. Um, I think the kids just want to be near each other in the hallways and talk about stuff and just be normal kids. And I get that too. Um, And it's tough for the teachers too. Um, You tell the kids to put the mask up countless times. And a lot of them do that. And there's kids that are so fed up with it, they just don't want to. They'll, they'll nod their head, they'll put the mask up, and then when they think they're out of eye shot, they put it back down. So th- this has been a hard battle for all of us. I know some junior high and elementary school teachers, the mask thing has been so hard on them and hard on their kids too. So I- I'm very pro-mask, but I'm also very sympathetic to my colleagues at the other levels that this has been a very big strain on them and their children and the families too. So I, I, I feel a certain way as a health teacher. And I'm also very sympathetic to some of the hardships we're all going through here. Right. And yes, you've, you've learned for good reason to trust the guidance of the CDC and the World Health Organization. And I'm just curious, while you, you have reasons to support uh, mask mandates in schools, what are your thoughts on a potential, now I know this isn't a thing yet, but a potential vaccine mandate to come to school? Are you for or against that or undecided? I, for some reason, I'm kind of leaning towards the, the side of that's got to be someone's option to do that. 
I, vaccines have been shown to lower the chances of COVID in someone and someone getting it. Are they foolproof? No, there's always going to be some breakthrough COVID that gets through to people. Um, it, it's got to be left to the person. I'm not going to be judgmental about someone for not doing it. Um, I think as long as you, again, you, you try to keep the social distancing best you can, um, wearing a mask as best you can, the hand washing, um, it, it's a tough one. But it, to, to mandate certain things that I, I respect when people choose not to do it. Mm -hmm. I hope okay. that helps. Yeah, absolutely. What are your thoughts on the mandates from a governmental perspective? Is it an overreach or is it a necessary precautionary measure? And I think that's a really good question, Paul, especially with Omicron going into overdrive right now, not just in the United States, but in the world. Um, case numbers are skyrocketing. Um, if you look, I hope you don't mind me getting getting geekified here. With no, you. I I appreciate it. In fact, I, to, just to show how geekified I have been about this, Paul, I'm pathetic. <laughs> but um, I mean, you look at the United States, and this is the New York Times website. This they're pretty good. All they do is just take the results from all the local health departments. So here's the current situation in the United States. Um, so here's the beginning of the pandemic back in February. Here's the current case in the United States right now. It is just blowing up. The daily average is 405 per day, and we had 286 new cases. But it's kind of cool. It shows us how many people have had at least one dose, people that are fully vaccinated. Um, so this is the United States. Um, but this gets fascinating, man. If you look down with this Omicron, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you look at a state like Florida that's just been hammered. This is where I'm getting excited about Omicron. The mm -hmm. cases have exploded, but look, guys, the deaths and the hospitalizations are way the heck down. Because what mm -hmm. happens with Omicron is, and again, I'm, I'm a geek, but Omicron just gets to the bronchus. It doesn't hit the lungs. That's what's causing the less severe symptoms in most people. There's probably going to be some cases with the size of the United States where they, there's some severe ones, but it's not that bad. Look at Rhode Island, too. They're having a they're having an explosion. But look at the cases and hospitalizations below the deaths and hospitalizations. Not as bad. New York. Man, look at that. But again, look at hospitalizations and deaths. This is encouraging stuff. So if Omicron takes over and it is taking over the Delta variant in the United States, if it stays this less severe and becomes the dominant variant, this could be the best gift from God since Jesus. <laughs> Maybe that's a little exaggeration, but I'm hoping that's the case. I'm still going to, even if it is the dominant variant Omicron, I'm probably still going to wear a mask until they say we're in the clear just to be protective of other people. But um, yeah, I'm hoping and praying it, it does what it's been doing in some of the other countries. And just to clarify, what is the reason you said for the, although the spike in cases, the decrease in hospitalization and death, is that the, what was that? Yeah, that's just kind of showing that Omicron is not as bad as some of the, uh, as some of like the Delta and Alpha and Beta variants. And if it becomes, the, and it's becoming the, the dominant variant, it's replacing Delta. Mm. And the cool thing about it is when people uh, when people get Omicron because of all the spike um, mutations on the on the spike, the protein spike, they can become immune to Delta if they get exposed to Omicron. So this okay. is some real this is some real fascinating stuff that's going on with it. But it, it, it kind of drives me crazy when the mainstream media is saying, look at all these cases and. Yeah, we need to be careful. Please don't get me wrong there. We need to be cautious. But also, let's keep looking at the symptoms. Let's keep looking at the, the deaths and hospitalizations. They may, they're going to rise. It's, it's going to happen. But it's not that dangerous. I mean, it can be. But you look at New Jersey. The hospitalizations and deaths are low there. Massachusetts. I hope people, if you're a mask wearer or not, this is encouraging stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's encouraging because it shows that the dominant form of coronavirus is not that serious, or I shouldn't say not that serious. It's not as lethal, at least. Mm -hmm. I've been following this doctor in the United Kingdom. His name is Dr. John Campbell. And folks, if you're interested, 
follow this guy on YouTube. He is a, this guy's amazing, but we, we understand that Omicron came from Africa and initially started in, Whoa, what happened here? Are you still with me, Paul? Oh yes, I am. Everything looks good on my end. I okay. Still see my, my screen just went blank for whatever reason. <laughs> but um, I'm trying to find uh, the Zoom and I'm not seeing it, but I'll go ahead and finish my thing here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in South Africa or Nambia or wherever, what, what country it was, a person was uh, in the hospital for COVID Delta. The person also received, also got exposed to a, a COVID, a SARS COVID strain that causes the common cold. Like in the United States, there's four versions of COVID that start the common cold, and they've been here for decades. Okay, so when the when the two are in that one uh, host cell of that person, and they're replicating, some of the DNA got scrambled. And again, this is what Dr. Campbell's sharing with us. And out comes Omicron. And of course, that thing's one of the mutations to it is that it's spreading like crazy all over. But um, in South Africa, the cases have started to dwindle. It's on the downslope. Um, I can't find something for South Africa. I've been trying to find it in uh, our world and data, but I haven't seen it yet. But uh, that they've had it there since the beginning of November. And again, knock on wood. And I hope I'm. I hope Dr. Campbell's right on this. But if this becomes the dominant strand in the world, and it is, it's replacing Delta. Um, this could be a blessing in disguise. All very fascinating. And as we come towards the end here and we're kind of winding things down, I want to finish with, in a respectful way, where do you believe that the people who disagree with your views get things wrong? Hmm. I think getting it wrong is a strong statement, Paul. Um, we've had this discussion before. You know, I'm kind of a religious person. Um hmm. <laughs> I know in, in 2 Timothy 4, um, Paul was telling Timothy, there's going to come a time where people won't listen to sound doctrine. Um, they're going to go to leaders who say what their itching ears want to hear. And I'm just as victim to that in things like this, too. Um, I tend to lean towards the, the pro-mask, the pro-vaccine people. And for whatever reason, people are more attracted to the to the anti-mask, anti-vaccine. Maybe it's from family. Maybe it's from from whatever faith they have. Um, I don't want to say it's wrong. I just think people, based on their environments, they they, they feel a certain way. Um, that's kind of my stance on it. I hope that makes sense to people. Mm -hmm. Matt, I'm going to push you a little further, though. Oh man, I thought I did good there. I thought I dropped the mic. <laughs> yeah, oh, you did. Well, I just wanna I just wanna get no, a, keep going. a satisfactory fun. answer out of you. Where you didn't like it? Well, where's where's the misunderstanding on on the opposing sides end, do you think? Like where where do you guys diverge? You know, when you boil it down, you know, you obviously disagree about the mass, but when you boil that all down, where's the core difference? You know what I mean? The core disagreement. I wonder if it's half a willing or an unwillingness to comply. I, and for whatever reason, I'm not sure. Um, I think it's a, a lot of it's a culture thing as well. Um, you know, what's crazy. I don't know if you can, uh, can you still just see my screen or can you, do you see my, I see your face. What? Yeah. I see your face. Okay. okay. I'm trying to get to another screen display here. It, it could be just a cultural thing between families or from, from people for whatever reason, but, I, I just think people hear what they want to hear and they just stick with that. Um, I really think Paul, that's all I can say about that one, Paul. Um, I think people are most, all people are genuinely good. Um, but I think just sometimes people, for whatever reason, they just, they get in their minds that that can't be right. And we've seen that a lot with this pandemic too. With the, the Center for Disease Control at the beginning of this pandemic, they were very casual about COVID. They said it was just flu and I tended to believe that with them. But then my stance started to change with that when I saw it spreading. And I remember March 14th when we met with uh, Dr. Pa with Paula Crane in the gym about the two weeks we're gonna have off and then go remote. Um, then I started realizing too, when it, when the cases popped up in Peoria County and in Woodford County, it's like, 
wait, this is not just the flu. This is doing some damage to people. That's when I started to take it a little more serious and uh, take paying attention to the types of masks that are being used and what's most effective. Um, and I won't say I'm perfect by any means. I'm, I'm far from that. But um, I hope I'm answering your question right. I just think people sometimes hear what they want to hear. Right. And it, it seems like you're saying, and I would agree with you, that there's kind of a core psychological difference in your willingness to respect, not respect authority, but at least adhere to governmental authority and mm-hmm. mandates like that. You know, you could psychologically right. analyze people and with information that has nothing to do with politics, you could probably to a T figure out what side of the political spectrum they would lie on based on their things like their willingness to comply with government mandates like what you're saying their uh willingness to take risk their emotional you know stability th- things like that mm-hmm. I- i've read all about it but yeah it seems like you get it that you guys diverge in how willing you are to respect and adhere to government mandates but can you see my screen then yes i can watch this um so this is the u.s look at japan now, this culture is very much in into following rules, okay? So you remember watching the United States exposure? They got nailed with Delta back in August. Look at that. Boom. Now, they're on a little uptick now, and I'm willing to bet that's maybe COVID, but can you see that? Yes, I can, yeah. That's mind-blowing. But in their culture, they they have this attitude of submitting to, well, not su- submission's a strong word, but they they follow the rules of their governing leaders, um, and of course they're an island nation too. That has a lot to do with it, also, I'm sure. But there is a culture there where they they follow they follow orders pretty well. Mm-hmm. So there, that's kind of interesting too. Yeah, and and there's probably less distrust, I would imagine, given that graph alone mm-hmm. of the media, of you know governing bodies like the CDC and the WHO, things like that. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Oh yeah, and there's times where I'm thinking, this, this is kind of weird. Like mm. I know in the United States, like I said, the mainstream media they're showing astronomical cases, but guys hold on, look at some of the other data here that the UK is showing, that South Africa is showing. There, there's more to it than that. So let's be cautious, but at the same time, let's hope let's hope Omicron runs its course and we, year 2022 is the year we say Arrivederci COVID. Mm-hmm. And like you were showing earlier with the graph, with the giant uptick in cases, but the relatively low, especially in proportion, cases of uh, hospitalization and death, it's important to show all the numbers. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I, I, I get into it. I'm, I'm geekified about this stuff. But at the same time, too, you got you to gotta print it all. Um, let's look at the UK, too. Um, they're still they're still going through some tough times here with some of their cases. Um, deaths are going up, but um, yeah, you got. I think again, this Dr. Campbell guy is very amazing with that. He's willing to pr- to print some of the stuff about immunizations, vaccines, but he's also very quick to correct himself too. And I I admire that a lot mm, too. Yeah. Oh, that. I I love that. It, the people that say, "Hey, by the way, everyone, I was wrong about this thing I said." Well, that just makes me trust you more. I don't trust when people start you know, doubling down on their words and getting defensive. That's like, well, mm-hmm. you've got an ego now. <laughs> Man, that's, isn't that crazy? Sometimes when you show weakness, you show strength. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, a million you know? percent. That's, that's a great example right there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. There, Jack, I think Jack Nicholas said, be, be gracious in, in defeat, you know, humble in victory, gracious in defeat. And that, that says more to the character than anything else. So I I admire that a lot. Absolutely. Well, Scott, this has been excellent. I can't wait to get the other side of this argument and put them all together. But before we wrap things up, is there anything you'd like to say before we do so? Um, Just look out for each other, everybody. Um, Thank you, Paul, for letting me uh, be on your show again. I consider it an honor. Um, I want to wish the mama bear as well. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got to say, and uh, maybe I'll, I hope to learn uh, 
hope to learn something from you guys too. Um, but let's look out for each other, everyone. Um, I'm very optimistic about the Omicron back, uh, variant, and I, it, it, we got some lean, lean uh, weeks, maybe some lean months ahead of us. But the way it's showing throughout the world, I'm, I'm really hoping and praying that if, if it's his will, this will be the this will be the end of this. Nicely put. Scott Willie, thank you so much for your time. Paul, great to see you again, man. Take care. Well, that was fun. And now we'll transition into my conversation with Tricia Rodriguez. But first, I'd like to give another quick shout out to a sponsor who makes this show possible. Fairbury Furniture is Central Illinois' champion furniture store. This family-owned business offers a vast selection of premium furniture items from all of your favorite brands, including Sealy, Best Home Furnishings, Leather Italia, Tempur-Pedic, and Ashley, just to name a few. And right next door to their gorgeous 7,000-square-foot furniture showroom, you will find the Fairbury Furniture Mattress Store, home to all of the latest and greatest mattresses in any and all sizes. Here at Fairbury Furniture, the staff is helpful and friendly, and they are well stocked with all the mattresses, tables, chairs, recliners, couches, rugs, and decorative pillows that your heart desires. Make your home interior beautiful, comfortable, stylish, and delightful when you shop at Fairbury's own Fairbury Furniture. All right, and now, Trisha Rodriguez. Trisha Rodriguez, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. I appreciate your time very much. Oh, Paul, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. It's totally a pleasure. Right on. So before we begin, could you just first tell the listeners and myself a little bit about who you are and what it is you do? Sure. Um, I am a mom in Arizona, and I also host the show Patriot Nightcap on YouTube. And we premiere on Wednesday, Sundays, 8 Mountain uh, Standard Time. I'm also a senior director of a health and wellness company. Uh, out of Idaho Falls. So we're very much into our toxic free products. Uh, We take it away from the big box stores and we basically just redirect what we're already spending online. And I have a pretty active life with my daughter and, um, and it's a pleasure to be here, but I too interview people as well on YouTube. And um, I'm, I'm David Nino Rodriguez's sister, by the way. And real quick, tell people who he is. Okay, David Nino Rodriguez. He is. Uh, he has a podcast and he has a show called Nino's Corner, and you can find him at ninoscorner.tv. And he also does a lot of live shows um, on YouTube. David Nino Rodriguez. He's otherwise known as Nino, and uh, he's a huge patriot. He interviews some fascinating people um, on YouTube, from Laura Eisenhower to Victor Avila, uh, Juan O Seven. And uh, he has a huge following. I'm, I'm sure your your uh, your crowd will, will probably know who who Nino Rodriguez is. Awesome, yeah. I, I guess I was out of the loop. I knew him more more so as a boxer, a heavyweight champion boxer. But anyway, that's he all. Is. He definitely is. It's funny that I didn't mention that. I followed my brother around <laughs> for years, watching him box. Yeah, he has an incredible record, and he has since uh, done like a springboard into uh, another life where he is he's now interviewing people and um, very successful at it awesome so let's go ahead and uh, jump right into things though what are your thoughts on mask mandates at this time in public spaces and in public schools are they a necessary thing or does the good outweigh the bad what do you think So, Paul, I'll tell you, I've had experiences with both. Okay, so I left New York, uh, a very blue state, when everything sort of broke out and uh, there was a lot of fear mongering, which there still is today. Uh, I was living in New York and, um, you know, my brother called me up and he said, "Okay, this is only going to get worse. (laughs) You should probably leave this tyrannical state because it's not good. Um, So I didn't trust what was happening. I took my daughter out of school. I didn't like the idea of putting a face mask, uh, a face diaper on her and not allowing her to breathe. I had unfortunate experiences there where I was, uh, you know, in a gym and I was told by some moms, listen, you better, you know, go stand in your circle and, you know, put your face mask, your face diaper on. And, and I just thought it was, it was, it was an overreach. I, and I think it's child abuse. And I, I basically left New York. I said, okay, this, this is not for me. This is definitely a lot of fear mongering. That was what my gut told me. 
And I moved to Arizona. I was able to relocate there. My husband got a job offer and we left. So cut to, you know, a year and a half later, you know, the moms and, and all of the people in New York are still living under this blanket of fear. Schools are shut down constantly. Uh, if you want a play date, you have to prove that, you know, your child's taken the jab and, you know, they're allowed to play for half an hour, but they have to wear the face diaper. I mean, it, it just goes on and on. Meanwhile, I'm now out here in Arizona. There's much more, you know, freedom. There's freedom over fear. People aren't fear mongering. And my daughter is very much enjoying school. And I would have say 95% of her class is not wearing the, the face diaper. Otherwise I wouldn't have her there. And I can tell you, Paul, I've been a former um, theater teacher and I've gone to her school like on Fridays and I've seen what's happening there firsthand. You have 95% of the kids that are, you know, they're, they're freely breathing, they're interacting, they're having a great time. Then you have the 5% who are sitting in the back, they won't participate. They look like they're traumatized. And, um, you know, you, <laughs> it, it's ridiculous. And our, our school has not been shut down. Kids go to school every day. We've had a few instances where I, you know, I got an email and I was told, okay, you know, uh, there's a child that tested positive and, but they don't shut the school down. Everybody just keeps going. I mean, and we now know statistically it's really it's it's the elderly and it's people with comorbidities that are truly affected by this in terrible ways. I'm not trying to downplay this, but I'm trying to put it in perspective because I've 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 experienced both scenarios and I can tell you the children who are not wearing their face diapers and enjoying a normal life are are healthy. They're going to school, they're not staying home, they're interacting, and we're having a much better time of it out here. So I just, I feel bad for, for the moms in New York, and I'm, we're much happier here in Arizona for sure. Mm -hmm. So the big thing that's going to jump out to people in what you just said was, firstly, mm -hmm. you called them face diapers. Can you explain why you called them that instead of masks? Okay, let's be honest here. We're all playing charades. We walk into a restaurant. We all know that if you go to a hospital, you're not going to see, you're going to see, you know, N95s or, or hazmat outfits. That's probably your best shot at blocking a virus, okay, is a hazmat outfit. You're not going to see people in, in face diapers or cloth masks. Those are porous. Those are ineffective. So in my opinion, people are walking around with their cloth porous, you know, face diapers, and we're playing charades. Does it make sense to you that you can walk into a restaurant and you're told, you know, you're forced to have the, this, this face diaper on, but the second you get to your table and you need a sip of water or you're going to eat, you know, you can take it off. And like, what, what is, this is, is so, it defies common sense. Are you going to now tell me that there's a force field that goes up and we're all safe because I'm sitting at a table? Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> we, it's, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down and it's porous. So I just... What I think we need to focus on, if you want to be proactive, is your health. So if you're worried, look at your gut health. Are you exercising? Are you taking your vitamins, your D3, your zinc? Are you going toxic free? Or are you supporting the big box stores and putting harmful chemicals on yourself and, and killing yourself and supporting big pharma? So I would say switch your focus, stop the fear mongering. And go, go with your gut health, focus on building your immunity. This is what makes sense. And, and you will feel so much better about yourself being proactive and exercising and eating healthy. You know, there is a relationship between gut health and your mind. I truly believe that. I've experienced that myself. So if you want to sit there and be fearful and mask up and listen, the way that I look at it is I, I, and I don't want to get it's hard not to get political, but it, it is the left progressives who are really driving this. So, you know, they, I'm sorry to say this, but they want to have their, you know, my body, my choice. They want to have their 900 abortions. Okay. But God forbid you, you better put that, you know, that cloth mask over your nose. I mean, it's, it's, it's insanity. Like it's the nexus of insanity in my opinion. So yes, I lean right. And yes, I believe in freedom over fear. I think a lot of people are caving to fear mongering and it's driving our society. And I'd like to see more alternative media out there talking about this 
And I'd like to see more moms speaking out. I think this is child abuse. You have a lot of kids who some are special needs. And they're told, okay, you can't get the help that you need because, you know, we, you, they need this assisted uh, educational experience, but they're told to stand six feet apart. Uh, you've got kids who break out in rashes, uh, infantigo. You know, there's a lot of, and, and we don't even touch on natural immunity. That's not even being discussed. I'm, it's my understanding natural immunity is far, you know, you're, you're, you're much more likely to survive this virus with natural immunity. We're not even talking about that. It's, it's just constantly, you know, drugs, the jab, drugs, the jab. Nobody talks about health and wellness, going toxic free, building your immunity. So we'd rather cave to the fear, take our drugs and, you know, I don't know, stay fat, I guess, eat at Marie calendars. I don't know, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm fed up. I'm, and I feel like I'm voicing my opinion for a lot of moms who feel very fed up. And I think that our children are unfortunately being victimized by this. I, I think it's uh, I think it's child abuse and I, and I feel terrible for them. The next question I want to ask you is what are your thoughts then on the mandates from a governmental perspective? Is it an overreach or is it a necessary precautionary measure? I think it's 100% an overreach. I mean, you can probably guess I'm going to say that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for the same reasons, you know, uh, I can, I can take care of myself. You know, you can take care of you. If you're, if you're terrified then stay six feet away from me, <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you want, if you want to get healthy, I would say jump onto Patriot nightcap, uh, fill out a job form, get, get your health and wellness in check. And, um, you know, ha have more faith, you know, w what's your higher power, pray, get, get healthy. No, I, I do believe that that's an overreach, Paul. I do. I, I, for the very same reasons that I just expressed. So I, I'm going to go with health and wellness and focusing on that. I don't think that a cloth face mask does much. I think it's ineffective. And, um, and I'm telling you, I've experienced both. I've been in New York. I've seen what's happening out there and the child abuse and mothers are turning against each other because if one doesn't want to get the job for their kid or for themselves and the other families are alienating them. I mean, that's that's abusive. That's that's isolation. It's psychological uh, terror, you know, whereas in Arizona, we're just not talking about it. I mean, look at Florida. They're not talking about it. I have a friend who moved from New York to, to uh, Florida. She's and, and, the, and the New York side said, well, what's happening in Florida? Like, you know, it isn't it doesn't the virus exist? She said, sure, it exists. But no one's talking about it. We're going about our lives. They're not wearing the face diapers. Their numbers are good. Now, listen, could could weather have something to do with it? I suppose so. But I, I'm going to say that. I'm going to err on the side of, you know, get healthy, focus on your immunity, take your vitamins. If you're, if you're still terrified, then, you know, wear your visor, your five masks. And um, it's not that I don't have sympathy, Paul, I do. I don't want any, I don't want to see anyone get sick. And this is why I stress health and wellness, but to, to make our children suffer the way that they're suffering is just not right. We know that they have very little risk of getting this. And if they do, they survive it. Okay. If they get, if, if they do get ill, they do, they have mild symptoms or none at all. Then I know the fear is, oh, the child will give it to the, you know, to the elderly. I understand that when I have felt ill, I, I take my activate C, I build my immunity. I don't get around my parents. Okay. I use my common sense. But, um, and I've been, I've, I've had my two weeks of bronchitis and I've gotten sick and then I get over it, you know? So I, I, I you know, I don't mean to sound crass or like I'm uh, not sympathetic. I don't want anyone, anyone getting sick. And I guess that's why I'm stressing health and wellness, but to, to sit here and, and just rely on a, a cloth mask, which that's what everyone's wearing. No one's really got their N95s on. And the only thing that's going to stop a virus is a hazmat outfit. Okay. So it's like, you know, and, and so I just think we're torturing our kids and I think we all need to step up and use our common sense and let these children enjoy their lives and have their childhood. You know, you only have your childhood once it goes very quickly. 
So I'm, I'm glad, you know, I miss my New York friends. I really do, but I'm glad that I'm not raising kids there. So, um, I would just say if, if you're in a blue state or you're in a tyrannical state, you know, watch the Iowa mama bears. They have terrific tips on how to handle your school boards. I would say, watch that video on Patriot nightcap. I choose, you know, freedom over fear. And, and I stand by that. And I've experienced both the, the New York and the Arizona. And I have to tell you, it, it truly is night and day. It truly is. Hmm. And I just want to ask, just for clarification purposes, what are your thoughts on uh, the vaccine and specifically parents who want to get children vaccinated? What do you think about about all that? <sighs> that is so frightening to me because, you know, um, listen, you're the parent <laughs> again. <laughs> You do you, you go talk to your pediatrician and, and I'll talk to mine. Again, children are having mild to no symptoms. So uh, the truth is we don't know 20 to 25 years uh, the effect that this is going to have. So um, I, I'd like to just leave it at that. I, I don't, uh, I guess my position is, Paul, um, freedom of choice, you know, uh, freedom of speech, and I don't think that anyone, especially the government, should be telling you as a parent that you have to get that for your child. You know, you are the parent. You should be able to talk to your pediatrician um, for a fact. Uh, there, there could be ingredients in there that are not going to um, mix with your body. You should not be taking it. But um so my position on that is, you know, consult with your consult with your physician. But I would definitely say, look at your health and wellness, the health and wellness side of your life. You know, are you exercising? Are you taking your vitamins? Um, you know, and are you using toxic chemicals on your body, or have you gone toxic free? That's what I promote. All right, very good. And as we wind down here, I just have one more question for you, and it's. In a respectful way, where do you believe that the people who disagree with your views really get things wrong? Mm. When they stroll up on me <laughs> in a restaurant or other places, you know, to tell me that I need to put something over my nose or because I again, I just don't think that it's using common sense. These are porous cloth you know, uh, face diapers. And so, and I think it's just ineffective. And I, and I do resent that. I think to myself, you know what, why don't you look at your <laughs> health and wellness? And it's usually someone who is clearly not healthy. I, I have found who is strolling up on me to remind me that I need to, you know, cover my face. And I, and I think it's offensive. I think and it's, it's an egregious overreach. And, and I'm quick to remind them, uh, you're in my bubble. You need to get six feet back right now. So um, I think, if, you know, you have to stand up for yourself. You have to stand up for your rights. And for all of the HIPAA talk, you know, and my body, my choice, and let me have my 900 abortions. They're like the first people to stroll up on you and, and tell you to, to cover your, you know, your nose with a bacteria-ridden uh, porous cloth. It's the, the height of hypocrisy and nonsense, in my opinion, and I deeply resent it. And I think that that voice needs to come out and it needs to be heard and it needs to be respected as well as natural immunity. We have to look at that. So for someone who says, look, I've had it, you know, their antibodies are high. They have natural immunity. Leave them alone. Leave, they're better off than you are with your 600 jabs. I guarantee you. And just not to harp on this too much longer, but just so we can clarify and more clearly articulate, do you believe that the core or the, the fundamental mistake that the opposing side makes is something along the lines of placing their trust in a new medical, uh, a new vaccine, rather than taking the initiative to improve their own health? Or would you say that they're too trusting or too willing to put their trust in a, a vaccine? Is it something like that? Or can you help me articulate that better? Like where, sure. um, what is the fundamental core uh, place that they kind of fall off where you guys diverge? Listen, 
you know, I'm not anti-vax in the sense that, you know, my daughter hasn't had her measles, mumps, rubella. You know what I mean? Like these are, you know, vaccines that have been around for a long time, but for something that is experimental, you know, you're damn right. I'm going to be on the fence about this and I'm going to look at this. So again, everybody has to do their own research. What I don't appreciate is someone, you know, coming in my space or telling me what they think I should do. So, um, and the truth is, if you're really connected to your, your gut health and you have an alkaline system and you're exercising and you're paying attention to your health, you're going you're gonna to stand up one hell of a better chance of getting over anything, whether it's the common cold, which by the way, coronavirus is in the common cold, or it's bronchitis, or it's a headache. I guarantee you, if you've been working out and diligent about you know, eating healthy, and you're not stopping off at McDonald's every, you know, every other day, then you're going to have a much better immune system to, to fight something off. So again, I would just encourage someone to say, you know what, let me look at my state and, and of being and my health. Let me address that. Let me look that, let, let me, you know, drink water and the right things and take care of myself and, you know, mind your own damn business. If you want to go get the jab, go ahead. If you don't, then don't. That's where I stand. All Freedom right. Well, fair enough. Well said. And before we wrap this thing up, Tricia, is there anything you'd like to say that you didn't already get the chance to? Oh, that's very nice. No, I think I've, I think I've said it all. <laughs> but, I, but I, you know, I, I will just say, listen, you know, um, Let's stop the fear mongering, please. And please don't roll up on me <laughs> at a grocery store or a restaurant or, you know, worry about yourself. Um, the cloth masks, they're porous. You know, we shouldn't be breathing in our own carbon dioxide. You're never going to convince me that that is healthy. You know, you're just not. Uh, you want to wear the visor and the five masks. By all means, go ahead and stay six feet away from everybody. Go ahead. But mind your own business. It's kind of like driving a car. Just stay in your lane. I'll stay in mine. And, you know, uh, again, I think it's the hazmat outfit that's probably going to stop a virus uh, to begin with. And I, I think we should all just really look at health and wellness and going green and eating healthy and, you know, taking your vitamins. And um, you're going to stand, you know, much more of a chance of surviving anything, a cold, bronchitis. COVID-19. <laughs> That's where I stand. All right. Well, Trisha Rodriguez, thank you so much for your time. That was very educational and you spoke very well. So thank you again. Paul, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. My pleasure. All right, and that's a wrap. I hope this episode was thought-provoking for you. Let me know if you had your mind changed or further solidified down in the comments below. And if you appreciate the show and want to say thanks, consider donating on Venmo to at The Paul Garcia Show. Or better yet, become a patron on patreon.com forward slash Paul Garcia for as little as $1 a month. This all helps so much and I appreciate it a lot. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. And if you're watching on Facebook, please like and share this video. As always, thanks for watching. God bless and have a great week.